uh, Oscar, uh, as always, can you just get us started with your overall thoughts on today's game? Well, first, uh, thank you so much for this first uh, press conference after after uh, uh, this uh, friendly game and and uh, having the people today in the stadium and and starting just getting in this game mode is is uh, important for us. Um, regarding the game, I thought it was a good game. I like it. I thought we had a lot of uh, good things that we surely need to. Uh, improve and bring it into the competition next week uh, against a good rival that has uh, it shows in the second half that has a little bit more rhythm than us in terms to the competition and uh, this this will um, probably would help us just to sharpen the things and and a good game a lot of good things so I'm very very happy and very optimistic with the team uh, the new players today they start just testing what is major league soccer and and what is the competition uh, we have in front of us uh, a good rival in the opener, and uh, I know this would help us, and 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 it's good. Obviously, uh, we all compete for winning in the friendly game, and uh, and and the taste after uh, the the defeat is is not is not is not the best, and it's good in in terms that we we push. Now the the good news is that the boys are are showing good things, and we're happy with it. We're gonna go to Mike. Mike. The front here, and then over to Ring. Thank you, Jackie. Um, Oscar, obviously not the result you were looking to get today. Obviously, only a preseason game as well. But um, if you can kind of talk a little bit about the first half, uh, where the team looked pretty uh, dominating, especially in that final third. Uh, what was something that you kind of liked from from your team in that first half, and um, the hopes of translating that first half performance into the second half? Right. Uh, I think the rhythms uh, of the games, uh, just being in competition mode all the time and just getting more games, it, it surely would help us on on continue with the same uh, rhythm that we have or showing in the first half. Uh, I agree that it was a very dominant half. In the second one, 65 minutes, we start just slowing down, and uh, and New England show more energy in those moments, and then. Um, it, it would help us just to evaluate ourselves. That's what these friendly games are. Um, a, a positive things, a, a lot of good things I see, especially from the guys that are new in the team. We'll go to Irving and then back to Luis. Profe, buenas noches, Oscar Alexander Pareja Gómez, Erwin Bustamante, Sport Bar TV. Profe, en la pretemporada se hace varios esquemas para probar el equipo, varios jugadores. Esquemas de tres defensas, de cuatro defensas, hoy cambias a cuatro defensas y hay un cambio en el equipo, se ve positivo y de pronto algo no tan positivo en el segundo tiempo. ¿Cómo quiere jugar este Orlando diferente al Orlando del año pasado? Y segunda pregunta, ¿qué espera el fan de Orlando City para este año? Gracias, profe. Bueno, mira, eh, dos mitades eh, distintas, de, más que por... Eh, por la manera de jugar, yo creo que más fue el volumen de, de acciones de, de gol que tuvimos en el primer tiempo. El módulo del equipo va a depender eh, de lo que los jugadores vayan expresando a medida de que uno va viendo el desarrollo del equipo. Creo que lo más importante es la idea del juego, una idea que Orlando presentó hoy eh, con, con muchas cosas generosas de los jugadores muy, muy, muy buenas especialmente en la parte ofensiva a eso tenemos que corresponder a ser más sólidos defensivamente y, y en el módulo pues simplemente pues, iremos buscando las piezas que se acomoden eh, tenemos un reto enfrente y es poder conectar a estos jugadores con un, un, un módulo, una alineación, pero un modelo de juego que ya es conocido, que no, no va a cambiar, vamos a mejorarlo. Luis. ¿Qué tal, profesor? Eh, una nueva temporada, se acerca, muchísimas gracias. Eh, la evolución que ha tenido tanto Iván Angulo y Wilder Cartagena jugando en dos posiciones nuevas, eh, tanto Iván más como lateral y eh, Wilder como, cent eh, como central en defensa. Eh, lo veremos teniendo minutos, quizás Iván más de titular y Cartagena entrando más en el segundo tiempo. ¿Cómo vemos esta defensa de Orlando eh, en esta temporada que se viene? 
Bueno, la posición natural de, de Iván, él es un extremo o un carrilero, puede hacerlo por izquierda, por derecha. Wilder es un volante tapón, más defensivo que ofensivo, jugador que puede jugar en un doble pivote o puede jugar solo. Eh, arrancando desde esa naturaleza, de, esos, de esas posiciones, pues los utilizaremos en un módulo donde se la estrategia nos dicte qué debemos hacer, ¿cierto? Pero estamos contentos de tener esa versatilidad de ellos. Um, we're, we're talking about the versatility of uh, Wilder and Iván and the positionings that we had tried during the off-season and, uh, and these games in the pre-season. That versatility would help us. Uh, the most players we, we have that can prove that I can play in different positions will be better but at the end the uh, um, the balance of the team and stabilizing the team is going to depend of the of that performance we'll, we'll see uh, along the, the game the games when the games comes so we'll see ahí vamos viendo como lo vamos ubicando a los jugadores pero esa versatilidad nos gusta me gusta mucho de profesor buenas noches marco quesada de verardo herrera punto con de costa rica es, bueno, sé que hay que ir paso a paso, eh, vienen dos partidos eh, de liga y luego lo que es la CONCACAF Champions League. ¿Qué tan desventajoso o cómo asimila el profesor Oscar Pareja estos partidos contra de CONCACAF Champions League versus un Tigres, por ejemplo, que ahorita tiene ocho partidos de liga jugados y ustedes apenas van a tener dos encuentros para, para la primera fecha en, en la ciudad de Monterrey. Y si me permite una segunda pregunta con respecto a, bueno, a los muchachos colegiales que, que llegaron esta temporada, no sé si usted personalmente, sé que el departamento de scouting lo hace, pero en alguna ocasión ha ido, a, por ejemplo, aquí en UCF a ver algún encuentro, a ver los muchachos, le cuento porque Costa Rica la temporada pasada habían seis muchachos, uno de ellos llegó a Los Ángeles eh, Galaxy, Gino Baby, eh, y ahorita quedan tres. Eh, no sé eh, si en alguna ocasión ha tenido usted personalmente la oportunidad de, de ir a esos encuentros. Buenas noches. Sí, bueno, yo, yo creo que eh, estoy, estoy de acuerdo. Mira, el, el, la, la ventaja en el ritmo de los partidos, en tu primera pregunta de, de los Juegos de la CONCACAF, de los equipos mexicanos algo que no podemos controlar nosotros es algo que está dictado por el calendario de la liga entonces no, no podemos quejarnos ni quiero tampoco empezar a, a abrir la sombrilla a decir que no vamos a tener suficientes partidos pues vamos a estar al punto de, de, de nuestra mejor versión seguramente eh, cuando tengamos 10, 15 partidos pero esperamos porque de eso no quiero ni hablar, esperamos de que estemos a la altura y que compitamos con, con, con Tigres como debemos hacerlo, ¿no? Así que vamos a estar listos para eso. Uh, I, I want to say about um, the rhythm that Tigres may have in, in the, in the uh, uh, international tournament and they collecting a lot of games and then we're, we're just starting and is is uh, the nature of our competition and nothing we can do is is not excuses just keep going forward and uh, con respecto a los chicos de UCF o los muchachos de la del del college lo conozco a Vivi si sí, los conocemos a ellos el la cosa es que en el, la estructura del draft es así como funciona yo no puedo ir a a, a, a tomar chicos del college deliberadamente porque ellos primero van a un draft y el draft se hace, cada, cada equipo escoge. Entonces ahí no hay nada que hacer. Son muchachos que una vez entran en ese juego colegial de la universidad, ellos están sujetos a las reglas de la liga y las reglas de la liga es que cuando ellos se gradúen o antes si salen van al draft y no al equipo que los quiera. It's a, a good question that probably uh, th that would help us all. They say that there's college players that we can see here in Florida and we can go in and, and see them, but we cannot choose them because the system is that Major League Soccer belongs to a system where those uh, college players goes to a draft and 
we have to wait. There's, there is nothing we can do there. But surely I see a lot of uh, potential here and a lot of young players in, in the colleges here in Florida that we would like to have for sure. But it has to be through the draft. Mm -hmm. Can I go back to Mike in the front? Profe, te quería preguntar sobre, bueno, primera vez que quizás nosotros vemos a Martín Ojea y la calidad que, que trajo por los primeros que 65 minutos de, con el equipo estaba dominando, el hecho que cómo complementaba con Facundo Torres eh, en las bandas y en el medio. Ya, esa es la primera pregunta. La segunda, eh, también Robin Johnson. Eh, sabemos que estaba bajo lesión el, la, la temporada pasada, está regresando. Se ve que ya está al 100%. ¿Cómo lo viste hoy? Y, y esa jugada donde básicamente tuvo una parte en ese gol que eh, tuvo ese balón largo, donde rompió la línea y Facundo mm -hmm. encontró a Duncan, Duncan a Holiday y luego el gol para, para Iván. Sí, mira, eh, Robin mucho mejor, ya está adquiriendo ritmo. A esta altura, pues eh, quisiera uno pedirle a los chicos todos que tuvieran su mejor versión. Pero, pero creo que los juegos les van a dar eso. Y, pero en esa jugada que marcas me, me gustó mucho el Robin. Desde ahí tiene un juego de iniciación muy productivo. Tiene un pie muy bueno. Encuentra muy bien a los lejanos. Y tratamos de sacar provecho de eso. Es, es un jugador que nos, nos trae y nos potencia mucho el, eh, eh, a todos. El hecho de que él nos trae la pelota y nos asciende el juego con su técnica. Talking about Robin Johnson on the way he uh, participated in the connections that we have in the game, especially in the first goal when he breaks the line and, and he attracts people and finds those pockets for us is, is something that, that, that we value a lot. All right, Mikey, thank you for joining us. Um, if you could just get us started with your overall thoughts on the game today. It was good. First half better than the second. Uh, I think... We were attacking well in the first half. We were killing them in behind, but then in the second, we got a little beat down in the middle. So then they were exploiting our wide spaces and just getting crosses in and just killing us because we kept losing the ball. But it's a good start. We just need a better finish. All right. Go to Mike. Hey, Mikey, obviously, uh, uh, obviously the, not the result that you guys wanted, mm -hmm. um, but looking into the season that we're a, a week away from starting, um, you're entering your fourth season as a professional. Um, the, the, the responsibility that's going to be probably dawned on you in that fullback role. Um, how are you kind of approaching it this season? Um, and obviously with an opportunity that you can become that, that regular starter this year um, that, um, that will be a first for, for you to have him. Yeah, just come out uh, doing what I'm best at, which is running. I like to run a lot. You obviously see that, but use my strengths and my speed and getting forward and creating opportunities like I did today and just keep going and just play my game. Don't listen to what people say and just play simple and try to play with, have fun with it because I play best when I'm playing fun and confident. Go to Erwin here. Michael, hello, how are you? Yeah. Erwin Bustamante from Sport Bar TV. What do you see different from last year to this year? And completely with my question is because you're going to have a lot of more minutes on the mm -hmm. field. Thank you. Uh, a lot of new faces, as everyone knows. There's a, bun a bunch of people left, a bunch of people in. But it's the same. We're approaching it the same way. So hopefully we just get it done. But yeah, everything we're looking at it the same, just new faces, new people to fill in the roles. Go on the back right to Luis. Hi, Mikey. Uh, Luis Pineda, Latin Pat Orlando. Thank you. Um, what are your thoughts on the newcomers uh, to the team, like Abdi, Salim, Shaq? Um, how do you feel you're meshing with them defensively um, compared to last year? It's good. Everyone's getting along well. Everyone's we got co good camaraderie. Um, but yeah, everyone's getting in well. Everyone good relationships, on and off the field. It's been good. Very good. Back to Mike. Obviously, this upcoming season, and just following up on the question that I asked you, I mean, is there any any anything in particular that you're doing in regards to preparing for, for the season? Is there a, a teammate that you perhaps lean on a little bit more that's more experienced and that can kind of give you some feedback? And, and what's that relationship with Oscar? Obviously, he's someone that does like to uh, – look at the academy players. You're one of those academy mm -hmm. players that did come up. Um, but just your overall approach and how you pre you're preparing for, for this upcoming season for you. Yeah, just building uh, 
bigger and better relationships with everyone in the back line so we're connected strong whether it's Robin playing me in those diagonal balls or just us staying connected in the back and with Oscar it's been the same we we've always gone along and he's he teaches me well telling me what to do and I listen to him so should be good I'm gonna go back to Luis Thank you, um, Mikey. I just wanted to know a little bit more about, you know, how was camp with the, you, mm. you know, with Alex, uh, with also with Thomas, mm. you know, and now seeing them in training also with with the first team. How was that at camaraderie with them? Yeah, it's cool. It's definitely cool. I've known them for a while now. We've all been in the academy together, so growing as professionals together and then going to national camps together, it's really cool. We get we, all three of us get along very well. So being able to play with play with each other with the U-20s, and then coming back and doing it here is really it's a good experience. Last one with Kamaho. Mikey, just two and one uh, questions. Are, are you eligible for the under-20 World Cup yes. this summer? Yes. And is that a primary focus on getting these minutes to get prepared for that under-20 World Cup? Yes. And second, I don't want to put you on the spot, but your mm -hmm. thoughts on the jersey. Oh, yeah, you're good. Uh, but definitely a focus is that World Cup. It's a big opportunity and something that I'd be proud to represent, of course. And, yes, I'm all eligible and fighting for that position. And then I like the uniforms a lot. It brings back to, I don't, maybe 2015, those uniforms, Sim similar to those. But, yeah, I like them a lot. I think they look good with the gold and the purple, our colors.